The sheer number of witnesses to the phenomenon that came to be known as the Phoenix Lights was unprecedented. Thousands of people were outside purposely looking up at the sky for a glimpse of the hale bopp Comet when they also caught a glimpse of these mile to two mile wide and some very credible reports. Either these orbs, these giant balls, these giant lights that seemed to be attached to something but they couldn't quite see what it was attached to or there was a force field in between holding them in rock solid formation or actual craft. People saw not only these mile wide craft go gently gliding right over their heads rooftop level. Some saw it take off at blink speed. Others saw these orbs actually detach from the main object, go out into the environment, and then redock with it later. Incredible technology, to be sure. And one of the craft was said to have split in two and then shot up very quickly. And also, what was amazing was it was totally silent. That was what was really took people's breath away, because even when it took off at blink speed, it didn't even disperse the air. The most reported sighting was of a V-shaped craft that for three hours passed over the city at a very low altitude before veering off to the south towards Tucson. Two months later, a Phoenix City Councilwoman asked for an investigation into the reports. Her request was dismissed with a joke. After the meeting, I was told by one of the deputy city managers that I shouldn't have asked the question. And I thought, why? And he said, because the mayor did not want anybody to talk about it. Well, the mayor didn't tell that to me, probably because whenever I was told not to talk about something, I usually did anyway. So it was, it was just a very strange time, and I really got curious about what was going on. Over that summer, I talked to probably over 700 people and everybody told the same story. They all saw the same object. You can't get that many people to agree on anything. There was another stranger point that the witnesses all agreed on. Everybody said that they felt uh, kind of awestruck, amazed. Nobody was afraid. Nobody said they were afraid. Six months before the mass sighting, the movie Independence Day was big time popular. And we are so inundated with the threat, 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 harm, harm, harm scenario that how are people supposed to react when they see something that's really unusual? But as it came closer, a calmness over everyone, adults and children as well, a connectiveness to the phenomena that when it passed, children wanted to grab their parents to take them in the car and, and chase after it. Witnesses waited for an official statement and waited and waited. There was no investigation. There was no explanation for months, nothing. And suddenly, on June 18th, a USA Today article, front page, came out and opened the story up to international scrutiny. We were deluged overnight after the USA Today article came out. Our former Governor Symington called a press conference for that afternoon to reveal the culprit of the Phoenix Light. And everyone took it seriously. And here he marches out one of his aides in a giant alien head costume and made a mockery of the sighting, which was really disconcerting, especially for parents or with children that saw this thing that was larger than a giant, giant mall. And yet he's making a joke out of it. And interestingly, right after the 10th anniversary of the mass sighting, don't know why, but he came forward to bravely disclose that he actually saw one of the mile wide craft. And in his own words, as a military pilot, it was otherworldly. Eventually, an official explanation was offered. The lights had been flares dropped by military aircraft on maneuvers. Witnesses remained skeptical. Right before the third anniversary, on March 7th, we get an announcement that three Air National Guards were coming into town to show everyone the Phoenix light, to reenact the Phoenix light. And they started on March 8th. And it was a joke. Not only did they try to make a giant triangle which fell apart immediately, but it had the characteristics of flares. They had huge smoke trails, they couldn't keep a formation. It really put the nail in the coffin for anyone that has seen the true unknown. Dr. Lynn Katai has continued to photograph and study anomalies in the Arizona sky and connects with other witnesses internationally. that this has been going on since human documentation began. 
There is so much history of these same phenomena. Just because we don't have the technology to definitively define what these things are, doesn't mean they're not real. We may just be looking on the AM dial for an FM frequency.